Hello. Evening. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, I had my hair cut today, so I was just sorting it out. Yeah, it's a bit Can lovely. we also just point out the irony that I'm here in my squidgiest, warmest knitted jumper that because I'm freezing cold and feeling like death today, and Adam looks like he's in Club Tropicana. Yeah, I, I, I always live in Club Tropicana. The, the problem is, Emily, darling, is that I got this t-shirt, this shirt, because you I like it. Get in trouble for this. And Emily wore my shirt last week. So if you were on last week, um, then you would have uh, seen this. So I'm just making, just getting, getting all the fancy stuff working. Um, Anyone going to join us tonight? Yes. We'll give it another minute or so, just to keep waffling. Yeah. So what, it's been good this week. Alan's done loads of polls in the group. Is that you on, or is it someone else on? That's probably you now, isn't it? It could be me. Uh, yeah, we did. Well, interestingly, it turns out that having a traditional style marquee, and there's actually variants of a traditional marquee, um, but a traditional style marquee in a farmer's field seems to be the most popular option. Now, I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't have chosen that. If someone said to me, what do you think is the most common? I wouldn't have chosen that. What have you chosen? I think... <coughs> I would have gone a clear span frame marquee, and that's not because I have a past in them. In a, I think I would have gone like back garden, like green space. See, I would have gone woodland teepee all the way. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one. Oh, we do have a watcher. Hello. Hello, Donna. Hello, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Get it off. No, don't. Don't be so rude. <laughs> She's so rude. Sorry for her. No, we've got a couple now. So, yeah, no, I would not have guessed that. And you would have gone woodland teepee. Te well, te in all fairness, teepees were only one step behind. So they're not exactly uh, unpopular. But, um, yeah, I, I just don't know. I wouldn't have called that. But then I think when you look at the rustic nature of an outside wedding, then you can see why the traditional... Um, marquee is popular and you can see why a farmer's field is popular and and I, I do love the kind of variety that you know a farmer's field I appreciate it's a field but it literally is how long is a piece of string yeah. you know um, it could be anything so. right what I think we, we'll start with this question here we've, yeah. we've, had, we've had a few questions through various um, methods this week either by email or on the group which I've written down um, I know for a fact that this lady here isn't going to be on live tonight because she's otherwise engaged. I mean, how rude is that? I know, I know. Wednesday nights at 8 pm, you should all be on by now because you know. Surely, it's right? Like, it's EastEnders. I think <laughs> EastEnders is on or at Coronation 8. Street on a Wednesday. Or Coronation Street on a Wednesday. Or us. Surely it's us at 8. The, the Alan and Emily Ask an Expert Outside Bride Show. Top of your priorities, every Top week. of your priorities. Anyway, so Sylvie, who's not on tonight, Sylvie emailed this question through and was asking about seating for the drinks reception slash um, after, you know, sort of nibbles and canapes and stuff after the. the ceremony and it's about an hour and a half to two hours worth of um of mingling and she was asking whether she should be providing any kind of seating for that um whether she should provide benches or chairs or to leave them to it to mingle um it was a really good question um i had a couple of thoughts on it and i've written a few thoughts down um number one yes Without a doubt, yes, think of your guests. Um, an hour and a half to two hours um, can be quite a long time, especially if you've got guests in heels um, who might want to have a little bit of a pet. Well, I, uh, yeah, I, th uh, I can't think... I, you know what I always think about? Mm -hmm. I think about, like, being at a nightclub when I was young and fun. You never um, young and fun. I, you know, I'd, I'd still want to go and sit down yeah. there. And, and let, you know, so... Um, um, you also might may have elderly guests. Elderly guests will need to have that little bit of reassurance that if they do need to have a sit down, they might have some space. And I would put as a character that make sure that it's actual chairs or benches rather than things like hay bales for your elderly guests. Um, hay bales are quite low, and anyone who's got any mobility problems may have an issue getting up and down off off the ground. Similarly with picnic blankets on the floor. So do put some benches in. You don't need to put loads in. Not everyone in your party is going to want to sit down, and you will find that no one sat down all at one time. Um, so you might want to just put. A few dotted around in the area. Um, don't just rely on things like hay bales. Uh, apart from obviously the, the obvious with the terms of of height, but if you are having an outside um, drinks reception and the heavens come down, you will probably not be using your hay bales because if you're hiring them um, rather than buying them, any um, 
hiro won't take them back if they're wet so the chances are you might not even be able to use your hay, bale hay bales on the day and if it, that is the case and you are um you're not going to be able to use them suddenly you have a lot of guests who don't have any seating options so just bear that in mind similarly with um expecting people to just sit on the grass because in again in in perfect scenarios people might just sit on, on the floor and have a drink and have a chat but if it's been raining the week before it might be sunniest day ever on your actual wedding day but if it's been raining the week before the ground might still be quite wet and soggy and people aren't going to sit their bums on bare grass yeah I, I think there's there's lots of options you know whether it's a bench a wooden folding chair you know if you want some lime wash shavaris for argument's sake then get some in um, I think even plastic patio chairs have their place, you yeah. know, in, in the right kind of, um, yeah. And any any kind of hiring of, of chairs really aren't that expensive, especially if, if you're not having any kind of formal sit down, but you need to hire chairs. I think starting points can be around £2.53 pound a chair. So and, and lower. And lower, it but depending lower. on what you want. So yeah. if you're only going to have a handful of chairs, it's worth that little investment just to make sure that some of your guests do have that option to sit down if they need to. Um, similarly, um, someone else this week was talking about what to do about their hand fasting ceremony and letting um, guests know about their what to wear on their feet. Definitely put down that they need to bring flip flops or flat shoes or if they're not going to do that because you will always get one lovely lady coming along with her best stilettos ever, um, invest in just some like little still heel, heel um, stop attack yeah, yeah, I saw that you post. Get. I can't remember who. Let's have a quick look who asked that. They're called it, Clear Hills, or they're called. There's a few different. Danielle, uh, so Kaz Farmer was asking um, tips for those who've never been to an outdoor um, wedding. Um, suggestions for the female guests, and yeah, they're cleanhills.co.uk seems yeah. to be the main and, supplier. And you, I've been to a wedding. I was managing a wedding once, and they literally had just a bowl of them on on the site. I mean, don't get too many as well because they, they are quite expensive and they will just disappear otherwise. Um, but if you have a, have a select few, just in case someone goes, oh my yeah. goodness, I'm sinking in the mud. Sinking in the mud with six inch heels is... Oh, six inch I went down the, uh, in, I think um, someone else mentioned as well, embrace it, you've just said this, and, mm. you know, chuck your wellies in, chuck your flip flops mm. in and um, make, make most of it. If you think about that kind of Hyde Park festival chic where hunter wellies, it's kind of cool yeah. anyway nowadays. Um, so. If you know that's going to be bad weather in the week before and um, it's all on the grass, maybe look at investing in some coir matting, do walkways to places, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that will help people's shoes as well if they are being um, not as clever yeah. with their foot choices. Um, I've, we, we've, we've often hired out um, Persian rug aisles, like if you're going for a bit of a boho kind of theme, we've got rugs to hire, we put them down so people can actually walk on a a better surface you can speak to your marquee or two people right i'm sure they have extra rolls of they have it in narrower coir coir, yeah. where you can roll out sort of walkways to to the key places to save your heels definitely 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 talk to your to talk to your tent provider cool um, right um, thank you to sylvie to sylvie yep. uh, the second one on my list is a quick one um where this is from kaylee and kaylee says where could you source uh, lanterns and paper pom poms pom 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 poms cost effectively now i've used paper lanterns and stuff loads over the years loads and loads of different events both, both indoors and outdoors and ultimately i've used expensive ones i've used cheap ones they make no difference at all basically they, they are they, hong kong specials then I would go to Amazon. I'll be oh, brief. Yeah. I'll, I'll go to Amazon. I wouldn't even look at all the special. And I, I apologise if there's any suppliers on here going, no, don't. Say. I would go to Amazon. Um, you get the biggest range of colours. You get the cheapest delivery because most of the time, if you're on Amazon Prime, you get cheap delivery or free delivery. Um, they do ranges of sizes, and ultimately, they are a throwaway item because if they're outside and they get wet, regardless uh, uh, of them being yeah. expensive or not, if the tissue paper gets wet they're going to be binned. If they're inside a marquee or a teepee or anything like that, um, with enough of them, and the, uh, they, they are fabulous, absolutely fabulous for colour pops and getting really good striking sort of colour pops in, in a very bare space. Well, we um, saw that one on, we, we were looking at a blog post this week, weren't we? And they yeah. had like a very white, ivory white marquee, which I, I love, um, but they just had these lovely colourful paper lanterns and it really did kind of bring it to life. So. I would say, definitely Amazon because they are by far the cheapest and you don't know the difference when they're up 
don't go down the road trying to make them. And I know some DIY brides and groups are like, yeah, I'm going to have a whole wedding party of my bridesmaids and we're going to make them from scratch. Hey, if people want to, they can. They In can. the time, money, health triangle. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No. But if you want to, then you want to. But it takes hours to fold. I know, I know plenty no. of uh, significant males at weddings who have wanted... It costs 90p a piece. No, no, I get that, I get that. But sometimes people just want to make them. Don't, yeah. don't say you can't. Okay. If you want to make it, you make, make it. However, they're dirt cheap. You know. Um, but the only thing I would say on paper lanterns and stuff as well is that you can get various sizes. They start at about six inches and then they go through to the, the bigger balls, like the 50 centimetre ones. I would say get a selection of sizes don't just stick to the smaller ones because if you have a large space you're going for a clear span mark or like that they'll get lost and you'll need a lot more to cover the space really invest in the larger ones because they will give you the big striking color you'll be able to fill the space more and they won't look as randomly dotted as if you have a collection of bigger or or go with some bigger ones and some smaller ones together and make little clusters of them as you go along because they will be awesome yeah. I, I was just thinking about that i mean the amount of people over the years who have had them at their wedding and then said to us would you like these and Emily's a hoarder she always says yes and we've just got these piles of paper lanterns anyone ever wants to hire someone well we don't have that many no we don't have that they they may get moved on every now and then don't tell Emily I don't think you have I think you think you have I don't think you have I've got aqua blue they're not there they're not there they are I know exactly where they are we have a container full of our extra hire items and um it's ever growing. If I suddenly disappear, that's because my chair's broken and um, I'm worried that I may hit the deck. That's why I was just looking over my shoulder. So, um, yes. Yes, on. No. Right, okay, and then the last thing, um, we have Sarah. Sarah Henshaw, who's new to the group. Nice to meet you, Sarah. Hope you're enjoying the group and you're finding it of use. Um, Sarah had the best question of the week and it was, convincing parents about the amount of work in an outdoor wedding and whether it's a good idea and the onslaught afterwards with the mass clear up how to convince them without saying it's our wedding we want yeah to yeah she said i'm saving the it's our wedding life for another now, day i will say one thing bring it yeah. up yeah hold the big guns hold back. fire especially hold if you've got a, any length of engagement coming up learn to bite your tongue and learn i'm not the best example of that um but Learn to, <laughs> um, learn to bite your tongue a little bit and know that uh, for pa- parents ultimately want to have the best day for you and they've been thinking of your wedding day probably since you were born and they have an image in their head and when it's something different to what they've thought about sometimes they find it difficult to articulate their feelings um, in the nicest possible way. No, no, um, no, I don't but, think. I think but, it's just when passions but, get involved and, I, and things yeah, like I that. I actually had this conversation. Are, you know. I was talking to Kay. We did a, a Bailey Meeks to speak with um, a caterer, and um, we were talking about street food and how the shift from um, traditional three course meals to street food vans and food carts and stuff have changed, and how some parents may or may not think that's not acceptable. You know, they they struggle with the idea of not having a sit down meal, and ultimately, it is your wedding, and um, you, you do what you want. Um, but it's all about guiding them through the journey of how is it going to be amazing. And ultimately, you're having a massive party with your friends and family, and it's going to be the best day ever for you. So just give them some reassurance. And I may must have a little list here of things to do. And I think a few people on the group this week have actually put their points as well, which covers some we'll, of the We'll try and name check the ones who have suggested have, this have as well, so. yeah. Um, so firstly, any wedding, be it an outdoor wedding, stately home wedding, barn wedding, church hall, doesn't really matter. They all come with challenges and they all have an element of hard work. Um, an outdoor wedding, yes, you have a lot to source and a lot to clear down, but Alan's got a great example of your brother's wedding, haven't you? So do you want to say that story? Um, yes, I wasn't actually listening then. I was reading something <laughs> else. Um, yeah, basically the wedding stopped at whatever time it was meant to stop, 8 p.m., and we then everyone there had to tidy up and um so which was kind of okay it was still felt fun um ignore the fact that it was in another country and i think the ones who weren't from that country were building up for a long night and the ones in that country they're used to going to bed early mm. so at eight o'clock it was like lights on we need to hand the hall back at 10 o'clock so we yeah we all pitched in so and we all tidied yeah. up and we all swept up and everything else and basically sort of, any yeah. wedding like that you know be it 
in a marquee or in a hall has its challenges and you just have to ride that sort of that train um but i think sarah's having it in a in one of their fields their own fields i think i got that from their post what i would say is um you have a whole week before your wedding and if it is your land then you're very lucky sometimes if you're not um hiring on your own land and you're hiring somewhere else it's worth speaking to your your venue provider about how long you have your hire for because you can um really relax your week by and i think kerry also put this by staggering in your suppliers coming in so making sure that the friday or the thursday you're not having every single caterer and bar staff um and marquee and tent provider if you're having glamping and all that all coming onto site at once to set up the stuff for the next day you don't need to have that hassle stagger it throughout the week so have your marquee maybe coming on tuesday or wednesday or wednesday or thursday um your anyone any infrastructure that needs to be there for, for the saturday start make sure that's like, just stagger it along sort of wednesday thursday friday just to give yourself a bit more um relaxed time um on that i would say also use your suppliers to your advantage now i think Kerry also put this um if you're if you're hiring a tent like a, a marquee or a structure chances are that TP. Like, yeah, yeah. No, it's, if it's a t a, any reputable tp company they will be providing everything on the inside as well so your, your tables and chairs your lighting anything in that in that kind of rig they put their fairy lights up and stuff for you as well that is their responsibility that's not your responsibility so if they're bringing it in they're going to be bringing it out again so that's not for you to clean up you don't have or well, you may have to stack some chairs you might have to um, break down some tables but you don't have to going to have to clear that off site similarly if you are booking a caterer and um, and checking your terms and conditions with that caterer to see if they if that's something they offer caterers bless their hearts often end up being the event manager for the day as well if you're not having a wedding planner or an event manager on the day and um, they will come in they will do your food service they'll be your waiting staff they'll often clear plates they'll often clear glassware as you're going they might buddy up as your bar staff later on in the evening if you need extra staff um so they're going to be taking things like your crockery if that's part of your your package put crockery and plates and all that, all, all that kind of stuff will be taken away from you you're not going to have to deal with that um, if you're going to be doing table centres, um, think about potentially giving those off as gifts to people to take home with them. So you're not going to be left with fifty thousand big sort of you know flowers or pedestals and stuff to deal with. Give them, re-gift them to other people. So you're not going to have to deal with that at the end. Um, I've put another one saying invest in staff for the day. Now you don't have to, and obviously if you're doing your own wedding, you want to keep it personal, fantastic. I would say investing in staff, be it through your caterer, be it through your bar, if you're having an external bar, or your wedding planner, or an event coordinator. Event coordinators can start from probably around 400 plus up to 1,000, depending on how good that coordinator is and what they do. For the day, it gives you that peace of mind not to worry about things. But if you're not having any of that, look at getting some external, a couple of people, maybe we, we've had weddings, we've gone to like local scout groups, I mean like um, Explorer Scouts, or <laughs> I'm just well, waiting for my chance to speak. To I have you. lots to talk about. Oh, yeah, so have and I. I made a list. Um, and students and all those kind of things. Get a couple of them in because they might want the extra money just to come and do a little bit of weekend work, and they can do the things like clearing b bottles and stuff throughout the evening. Go, Alan, go. No, I totally agree with everything Alan <laughs> said. I think that fundamentally, don't, <coughs> um, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but it will be hard work. Yeah. Um, so you know, making. Sh I remember a wedding where the next sorry I got a notification where on the on the Sunday to clear down there was an entire like van load of glass that needed to go to um, the recycling centre and that was the downside of a free open mm. bar mm. because we, all of a sudden that needed tidying up so don't underestimate those little things I mean I know um, Yvonne Beck mentioned on the post about have a clear down party mm -hmm. so invite everyone over for breakfast on Sunday Get morning and go would you mind um, I think really it really is going to depend on how much work you and your family are happy to do how much you want to do or don't want to do and how much budget you have available to perhaps pay for people to do yeah. it for you um, with regards to alleviating their kind of nervousness around the day 
sit down and kind of talk them through it and for it what, like um, we did yeah 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 well Emily's reminded <laughs> I don't remember this I do remember getting both sets of parents together we had your, uh, your mum your dad and stepmom and yeah. um, um, my parents in a room with a flip chart see I don't remember the flip, <laughs> flip chart flip but chart. Emily says we did it, and that <laughs> is very much like us so I wouldn't be surprised if we did do that but I don't remember it we did a break, break, break I would have done a keynote you probably did a keynote yeah, or something like that but it was quite something. funny looking back at it um yeah. But yeah, definitely get them on board and maybe take them to a couple of wedding fairs. And if you're having an outdoor ceremony, like people places like Tentario and those sort of things often have open days when they have all their set up. So get them along to that. Go and get them to see it in the flesh because a lot as well, lots of parents haven't seen this. It's still quite a relatively new kind of fashionable thing that the tent, the, um, the TV yeah. is. It's really not that, and it's quite niche. It's very, very niche. So just get them along to see and get them excited about things like that. I, 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 I would, yeah no I would I would ascertain exactly what your suppliers are doing so if you're having a bar company in for yeah. argument's sake what do they do yeah. you know and and do they arrive with everything and leave with everything without you needing to touch it unless you're drinking it for argument's sake because that's what you want mm. um uh, likewise a, yeah with everything else it's a really good one and I brought, touched on this with um with Kay yesterday as well it's the for whatever reason, some some couples don't do it because it's new to you when you're dealing with suppliers and having relationships with supply, suppliers. Is you get given your contract, we get given your terms and conditions, and often you just sign them and off you you pass them off to someone else. It's really important. Really, I can't stress this enough. Really, do read your terms and conditions and work out exactly exactly what that supplier is doing for you and what they're bringing yeah, and what they're not bringing yeah, before you just sign it and go, yeah, good. Because otherwise you go, I didn't realise that. Because you, you might find that, for, for, and I don't think this actually exists, it's just an example I've got, but your, your TP marquee company may say that the carpet needs to be cleared mm. before, you, before they arrive, i.e. Mm. you need to sweep the floor. Now, I don't actually think I've ever heard of that, but it's just the only example I've had. But I know the tables might need to be cleared. So then, if the tables need to be cleared before the marquee company come in, Whoever's clearing the tables, hopefully your caterer, when are they clearing all of their equipment out? So I remember in my marquee days, we've said we will be here at X o'clock and we turned up at X o'clock and the catering equipment was still everywhere. And the, and the, the couple unfortunately got, yeah, we didn't think about speaking to them about that. They're coming tomorrow. So we had to then move it all out because we, we were helpful, but it was a little bit awkward for you know a couple of but moments. That's where your timing comes in. Like, mm. like I said about your planning your week before your wedding, when you have your marquee on Wednesday, blah, blah. Do the, the same in reverse. So um, often as a bell tent company, we'll go in on the Sunday afternoon or the Monday morning, won't we? on an average weekend wedding. Um, but like Alan said, if you're booking your marquee to come in on the Sunday afternoon to get rid of it as well, and your catering company don't come into the Monday, you just need to just timeline it and be methodical. Get a, get a flip chart, get a flip chart, they're great. Um, and just write it all down so you can see it in front of you rather than just one person having it in their head because the groom might think one thing and you might think the other thing and it all might get a bit messy and you want it to be streamlined. Um, there were just two other little things on this, and they're, they're minor things in terms of making sure it's less messy at the other end. Um, if you're having um, a lot of mess, or you're going to be having an open bar, or you're going to be having a bar where there's glassware, that's um, bottles and stuff like that, look at hiring a skip. Um, they're not... Oh, I don't even know how much a skip is. Well, I don't know. There's, um, and to be honest, it's certainly not something I really know about, but even if you've got some wheelie bins, you yeah. know, or, or yeah. these hippo bags, I don't, I don't, we're not experts. I don't no. know. I'm just but thinking of things. the thing, if it's on your land... We are experts, but not experts in that. <laughs> if you're hiring, a, if it's on your land and you're hiring a skip, it, yeah, might, if it's be, on your land, it might be more cost effective than you having to go and take it off to a recycling centre somewhere else or getting someone to clear it or having to put it in vans and stuff like that. Someone can, you can just chuck it all in the skip the, the skip provider can come recycled sorted yeah, out yeah. obviously pick it up take it away and you don't have to think about it um, or like Anne said get some big bins and um, we, we covered this a few weeks as well decorate your bins put some nice rush matting around them or you know just make them look less bin like on yeah. the day and then just, just encourage people to, to be throwing it away in the right way rather than being all on the floor not that people put things on the floor these days most people are quite civilised and then the other thing if you don't want to have any kind of glass at the end of it, use recyclable glasses like um, Kilner jars are often quite um, fun as well. You know, Get people to have their, their cup with a label on so they can keep going back to the bar to make sure that they're using one cup. 
as much as possible throughout the evening and yeah. you won't have as much to clear up at all definitely I think that's right. it I think that is it for tonight has anyone got any questions no quiet tonight it is quiet tonight have we missed something is it a royal wedding is there a big football no. match on that we wouldn't know I about I heard you were coming back uh, I did write and I'm back and I was like yeah I was really excited and clearly no one else was. So. I'm really excited that you're back, darling. Whatever. We've had, I think Wednesday is <coughs> domestic <laughs> day for Emily and I because we seem to have a domestic every Wednesday. Not not blazing round because we don't particularly shout no. in front of the kids, but there's always a bit of mmm. And um, so for whatever reason, by the time we finish this, we're normally over it. Um, yes. Is that if what it helps, I think your hair looks lovely in this picture today. Thank you very much, darling. I think you look lovely Looks as well. Very Harry Styles. And you know what? I, I look, early days. In I'm quite happy with mm. anything like that. I, I, I love the fact Ben joins us every week. Aww. Bless him. Bless him. That was last summer, anyway. Um, no one really cares about our domestic, my hair, or Ben. Well, they probably do care about Ben. They <laughs> probably don't really care. About. I won't be ill next week. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for tuning in tonight to the Outside Bride, Alan and Emily Ask an Expert show. Mm -hmm. uh, in our heads, this is Saturday night primetime TV. I'm probably sure that comes across a little bit. I'm really um, oh, I've got. I'm going wedding dress shopping with a friend tomorrow. Woo! That's very cool. I might have to do some sort of live slash you know, a bit of a looking at the trends in the wedding shop. Yeah, why not? Mm. Where are you going, Botley? Going to Botley. Oh, I know. Yeah, not not that one. That one. Okay, mm. we won't mention them anyway. Mm. But uh, cool, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a fab evening. Thank you for those who joined us. And even if you're watching this back and you have a question, feel free to uh, place it in. And we look forward to speaking to you again next week. Ta-da! Bye. Bye. Thumbs up for charity. Uh,